Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to show you everything it took for me to get the cap reinstalled onto the V156. So stick around because vlog 22 starts right now. Alright everyone, so before I get too far ahead of myself, let me do a quick recap of the previous video. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, I'll put a link here um, in this little title card, but you can go back and watch that now if you'd like to, and then come back and, and watch this video. But in that video, basically, if you have seen it, uh, you will remember it's just basically the beginning stages of my audio system. Um, and then in the end of that video, the important part that I want to carry over into this video was you saw me take the cap with some of my family members. We flipped it upside and set it on top of the hole. Um, now, with it sitting on top of the hole, what I did next was I put some 2x4s uh, to kind of keep it up above the hole. Um, the reason I did this and didn't actually set it down into uh, position was I still had some prep work to do, but I was trying to take advantage of everybody being free on a Sunday afternoon and get the cap over the boat so later that week when I got my prep work done by myself, I could just kind of put it back into place without needing to call anybody to come up here. So that was the whole... Uh, forward thinking that I was trying to do. So anyway, like I said, I used two by fours to hold it up above the hole. I had one on the very front of the hole. Uh, this board just ran across flat. The bow rider actually sat on top of that. And in the back, I used more two by fours to support the rear cap up. Now what I did uh, by doing this was I made the cap even, just like it would when it sets into the boat. It's completely out of the boat and it's resting like it would in its final position just above the hole. Um, so basically it's just, you know, it's just kind of raised up out of the hole and out of the way. And that was important because I had some prep work to do to the hole. We went ahead and started removing some extra pieces of fiberglass that were gonna be in the way before I could fuse the fiberglass uh, cap to the fiberglass hole. Now, these were just some jagged edges and stuff on the very back of where I removed the cap from the, uh, the hole originally. Um, just some pieces that weren't smooth and I tried to even it all out and the best way to do this was I took a uh, air hammer with chisel and chipped a lot of it away and this was a lot of just extra buildup that wasn't necessary. Uh, I got it down to a nice even flat surface and then once that was done um, I kind of ran some coarse grit sandpaper across it and then wiped it down with acetone and it was prepped. Um, the next thing I did was the actual transom itself. I took that same coarse grit sandpaper, roughed up a lot, like I guess the top quarter portion of the transom, roughed that up a bit, uh, wetted it down last tone so that it would also be ready to take uh, fiberglass as well. Um, it had been so long since the transom had been touched with fiberglass that it was needing to be refreshed before trying to put any fiberglass to it. That's just what I had heard a bunch of people talking about. Um, anytime you've had fiberglass kind of, we'll just say it lays dormant for a while, you know, when it's not really been active, because um, this boat has been a process of months and months and months. Uh, crap, let's just be honest, it's been years. Um, it had been so dormant since I had done anything to the transom that it was a good idea to kind of do this to kind of freshen it up and get it ready. Um, so once those two pieces were done and ready to go, we moved on to removing the glue uh, residue from the sides of the hull. Now, this, if you remember, uh, when I removed the vinyl pieces a long time ago, um, there was glue residue from those original pieces left on the hull. And this was just something that I never worried about removing early on, uh, the residue that is, just because it wasn't in the way. I didn't find any pieces of the hull that needed to be uh, repaired, so there was no sense in having to clean it and do all that early on. This was always something I saw coming uh, down the road. And one of the things we did to remove the glue was we used methyl ethyl ketone, also known as MEK. Uh, it comes in a jug much like everything else around here. The acetone, you know, it's just a little gallon jug. This is 4540. Don't ask me what that really stands for. I got this at the auto body uh, paint supply store, but I don't even think we used maybe a quarter of this, um, maybe even less than that. Um, but yeah, this is a gallon jug, methyl ethyl ketone. Uh, it does a good job of getting residues like that off of any kind of surface. But yeah, it, uh, it did a good job. Um, also, the other secret to our success was I used a scraper blade attachment uh, in my Sawzall. Now, 
This really did a great job of scraping all the glue residue completely off the surface. And this thing actually cleaned up pretty nice. I was, I was pretty surprised that we were able to get it as clean as we did. Um, I just thought we were gonna have some spots where we were gonna have to get sandpaper or something out. And you know, I was just expecting the worst on this process. But it wasn't that really um, bad of a job um, using these two uh, things that we did. So that was it as far as glue removal. So with the glue removed, I could finally get to dropping this cap down into place. And before I could do that, I had to mix up a batch of fiberglass putty. Um, now, if you haven't seen it before, I'll put another link here to how I make fiberglass putty. Um, specifically what this putty was gonna be used for was on the back side of that cap, I was gonna put a thin, uh, good layer on there, and then I was also gonna put a layer on the transom itself where those two areas would be meeting up. So basically I was putting double putty uh, and then making sure it would all merge together and it was gonna push out anything um, around the sides. And so to do this, mixed up a, what I would call a, a more fibrous uh, batch of putty. I put a lot more of the chop strand fibers into the mix um, just to make sure it had enough bite because I do not want this ever coming loose. Um, I really hope this never has to be done again. And the way I've been putting this back together, it's gonna be a chore if that ever happens. Um, but anyway, and then proceeded to drop the cap down in place. Once I had the cap drop down around the edges, I then took some marine grade plywood and some clamps and proceeded to clamp this thing in every possible way that I could. So once I had the cap and transom clamped together, all that fiberglass putty started oozing out just like I expected. So then I scraped a bunch of it off, made it a nice flat surface as best I could do with that board being there. And then I relocated that putty to the bottom side of the cap. And where I'm talking about is where the bottom side of that cap meets the transom. It's kind of like a bowl uh, where the motor rests. Well, I took that putty excess and kind of put it around the edges there, just making that all nice and snug around there, uh, making sure there wasn't any um, open cavities there, so to speak. So yeah, that all worked great. Put a lot of clamps on here. I also even ran a, um, I ran a ratchet strap from the front of the bow rider to the rear of the boat, just to make sure I had a little bit of extra pressure on that transom. Um, I don't know, that might've been overkill, but I was really worried about um, just the cap itself. Once I had it on there, I wanted to make sure that fiberglass cured in its final resting position. Um, I didn't put any screws in place at this point because uh, it didn't need it because this was all just about the uh, fixing of the uh, transom. So with the cap being fused to the transom with fiberglass and then being ratcheted down and clamped into place, all I had to do next was just let it cure. So that's what I've done and that pretty much marks the end of reinstalling the cap. Uh, the rest of it will be done with the guardrail um, rub rail around the perimeter of the boat and putting the screws back in place. That'll make it actually permanent, but this actually got the cap onto the boat and marked the last part of it that I would have to fiberglass um, to make it structurally uh, one piece again. Um, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. So as always, I just wanna say a special thank you for everyone out there who is watching this video. Thanks to all of you who have subscribed, shared, given comments, even given thumbs ups. Um, I really appreciate it as always. Um, I just wanna say for those of you who haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing so that I can see you next time.